Well, this video took way too long to get out. It got delayed about as much as the PC release of Grand Theft Auto V. But it's finally time for the Super Smash Bros. 4 Glitch Fest. Today we'll be tackling both the Wii U and 3DS version. Although keep in mind this game is actively patched, so some of the glitches you're about to see may be patched in the future or may have already been patched. With that out of the way, let's get started! Smash games tend to have similar types of glitches across the different games, so naturally the first thing I did was hop into the Bridge of Elden stage with Jigglypuff and get her final smash. Uh, Jigglypuff? Are you okay? You look a little... terrifying. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'll, now you're just overreacting. Anyways, I hop into the bridge, use the final smash like we did in Brawl, and nothing happens. Well, that was worth the time. Something from Brawl that does work in this game, however, are the zero HP tricks. I hop on into a stamina match with Smash Balls turned on and choose a character that has a transformation final smash. In this case, I chose Bowser. I whittle him down to one HP, but I need... To go even further beyond! So I just have Bowser activate his final smash, bop him, and there we go, zero HP. Now it's Sonic's turn. Or, or not. But of course you cannot have a Smash Bros game without some training mode item shenanigans. If we hop into training mode and drop a bunch of items, normally they'll scatter. However, if we set the speed so that it pauses unless we hold a button, then drop a bunch of items, they'll stack on top of each other. This lets us create super bombs or super green shells, more super bombs, super soccer balls. <laughs> hey, whoa, don't get mad at me, it says soccer right there. It's the game calling it that, not me, I swear. This trick is about as pointless as a broken pencil, but still lots of fun. Whenever you pause the game in a match, you have controls over the game's camera. As you'd probably expect in some cases, this does let us clip the camera inside of the stage and get some pretty neat views. Usually this is not going to work with flat stages, there has to be some part of the stage kind of protruding towards the screen. Hyrule Temple, Battlefield, Luigi's Mansion, and a few others are all fantastic with this. Now it's time for something with everyone's favorite, this guy! Wario's motorcycle has some bizarre properties when it's sent flying into a somewhat tight gap. For example, in Palutena's Temple. If you get top speed on the motorcycle and jump off with the right timing, the bike will bounce back and forth getting faster and faster until it ultimately clips inside the floor. You can do the same thing in this little pit in the Great Cave Offensive. If you watch at a lower frame rate, the bike may appear to just vanish when it spazzes, but at 60 FPS you can clearly see it go back and forth, as well as right here in slow motion. Kinda, kinda weird. I don't know why that happens, it's just, just physics I guess. In the 3DS version, if you drive the motorcycle into this part of the Spirit Track stage, the motorcycle will spaz for a moment before settling down. Well Wario, enough of the limelight, it's time we wreck you! With Ness and Wario, I head into Woohoo Island and wait until this boat appears, which sometimes takes gosh dang forever. But after enough patience, it's finally here, and once it does arrive, I position Ness so his foot is halfway on this darker part, and halfway off of it. Then I grab onto Wario and do a down throw, which oddly instantly kills him. I have no idea why this happens, and I have tried it with other characters, but can only seem to get it to work against Wario. Well, while we're insta-killing stuff, if Fox is on the edge of a stage with his reflector up, and Villager shoots his gyroid at him just right, instant death. It's kind of like instant noodles, but more deadly. Or maybe less deadly, I don't know. This does also work with Mario and his cape, but that one is a bit difficult to perform with just two arms, and considering I'm not Mother Shiraz, I passed on that one. I would say this next one is performed with Bowser Jr., but forget Bowser Jr. I'm going with God dang Larry! Aw yeah! This one is a little bit complicated, so let me explain a few things. When you use Larry's up B special, he drops his little clown car and his aerial moveset changes to this hammer here. However, if he gets hit, he goes back to his normal aerial moveset, which most importantly includes this move, his neutral air. For whatever reason, even if Larry is without his clown car, his neutral air forces it to spawn. Essentially, we want to activate this forced respawn just as we die to activate the glitch. Still with me? Alright, so here's the setup to make that all happen. First off, make sure you have plenty of damage on yourself. This will help us kill ourselves. Then just spawn a little Mecha Koopa with down B and pick it up. Wait for a moment so it's close to exploding, then jump off the side of the stage, use your up B, and you'll lose your clown car. If you time it right, the bomb should explode, which does two things. One, it damages you so it gives you back your normal moveset, and two, it stage spikes you so you go down to your death. And finally, all we have to do is hit neutral air with the right timing just before we die. This may take a couple tries or a eh, hundred, but the result is Larry is just totally bugged out, warping all over the place as we run around. Rolling is strange, running around is strange, pretty much everything is just messed up, and it's pretty gosh dang cool. But you know what else is cool? Ice. This is ice. <laughs> 
So this next glitch involves good old Nabbit. I head into the Mushroom Kingdom U stage and wait for Nabbit to show up. Once he does, I grab him, throw him, and pause right as I do, which oddly makes him get stuck inside you. That is weird enough on its own, but afterwards, if we grab an opponent and then throw them, they get stuck inside us. This can have different results depending on what characters you use, and I spent hours trying out different character combinations. Here are some of my favorites. Using Yoshi just makes your opponent invisible, but hitting them brings them back. Wow. Dark Pit has some strange effects with his side B. Sonic jumping around makes him look like a dang trapeze act or something. And while many attacks will knock your opponent free from this grab, Sonic's back air does not. So you can just beat him as much as you want to. With Mega Man, running makes the opponent oddly lag behind you. Lucina with Donkey Kong makes me look like I'm wearing a dang DK suit. This is just weird. Villager leads to a lot of cool stuff, like Olimar with creepy bug eyes. His dash attack makes the opponent lag behind. Half of DK's entire body vanishes, and you just have legs. Charizard has the same effect and becomes a grotesque torso hat. Oh, gosh, I feel like one of those Pokemaniacs. And Bowser becomes a Bowser costume. Oh. Characters with a grapple effect also lead to some pretty bizarre results. Hey, whoa, Zelda, are you trying to sneak a peek up Link's tunic? Here, I'm essentially fishing with a Ganondorf-sized lure, probably trying to catch a Sky Whale or something. And Samus, Samus gives no crud. She holds on to both Nabbit and the other character. Okay, okay, enough with Nabbit. You know it is not a Smash game if there is not some way to make a black hole. The results for this one are not quite as cool as they are in Melee, but it is still pretty dang fun. So, here's the setup. So, first off, you have three characters on one team, including two Lucarios and preferably a character that can hit really hard. I picked Ike. Then one character on another team. We also turn items onto very high and only turn on hotheads. I have the two Lucarios face away from each other with the opposing team member standing in between them. Then have them both charge their aura spheres at the same time, which should trap the opponent. And then with Ike, I simply start running around, grabbing all of the hotheads I can find, and then throwing them into the mix. And once they're in there, I run up and do the hardest hit I possibly can, which for some reason makes them grow, and they don't seem to disappear either. And because of this, they'll never disappear, I can keep throwing more and more into the mix and just make it ridiculous. As far as I can tell, this is as close as you can get to a black hole within Smash 4. And one other side note, if one of the Lucarios drops their aura sphere, all of the hotheads will be free at the same time. It'll be crazy for a minute, but with some patience, order will be restored. Over in the 3DS version, for some odd reason, if you grab onto a ledge as Lucina or Marth, then have someone steal the ledge from you, and then use a counter, it flings you off the screen to your death. This doesn't seem to happen with any other character, and as you can imagine, it's not exactly useful. Unless being Sanic fast is your dream. The Bridge of Elden trick from before may not have worked with Jigglypuff, but at least she still has something in this game. In training mode, if you use a Final Smash with her, then just before it ends, alter the damage to 999%, or it's just high enough so there's some steam effect. The steam will stay huge as if you are still Bigglypuff, but Jigglypuff will be back to her tiny round self. Okay, I need you all to just not judge me. For this next one, I need to make a me sword fighter. Here is my me. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but in my defense, this is the default one they gave me when I got my console. Anyways, I make the sword fighter, give him an appropriate name, then head into a fight. This one is pretty simple, I just use a taunt which causes his sword to glow, and if he's hit while doing so, the sword will stay glowing. Pretty neat. Wait a second, he has a counter? Yo, nice! With Rosalina, if we head into Corneria, I, I think that's how it's pronounced, I have no idea, we can actually use her down B gravitational pull ability to pull in the bullets from the ships flying by, as well as the giant ship itself. Doing so leads to some fairly explosive results. The same thing can be done with Ness, and I'd even say it's a bit easier with him. Still using Rosalina, if we go into a battle with her and Yoshi together, there's another glitch. I have Rosalina grab a super mushroom, get egged by Yoshi, then fall to her death. As long as she dies while she's still big and before Luma does, then when she respawns, Luma will still be large. His range is still really big, although his damage will be back to normal. This also works using poison mushrooms to get a teeny tiny cute little Luma. Look at him. Unfortunately, this effect does not stack. You can't just repeat it more to shrink or grow more. And unfortunately, again, you can't just go into a special smash doing large or mini melee. 
because it doesn't work there either. And now, the last few glitches are all from my main man, Yoshi. Sadly, they've all been patched out at this point. Regardless, I do have the footage, so let's take a look. The first one is really minor, but still pretty cool. If you use his butt pound onto a slope, it'll cause him to slide along pretty fast. If you grab onto a ledge, then hop off and start mashing his egg throw, upon landing, he'll warp back to the ledge. You can also do this with his egg roll. Just ledge hop, egg roll, then when you're ready, start mashing up B, and he'll warp back. This can go some pretty long distance and is really cool. And last but certainly not least, if we head into a multi-man melee, the last opponent will be a large Yoshi. If we egg him, he'll get bigger and bigger. Eventually, he'll be so large that just existing kills himself. Let me remind you, that is three Smash Bros. games in a row where Yoshi has led to some sort of size-altering glitch. Gosh dang, Yoshi, this is why I love you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. Smash Bros. is being put to rest. We finally finished the series. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Wow, that was the longest glitch fest I've ever made, and that was crazy. But I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a lot of work, but I think it was worth it. Here's the part where I tell you to click on stuff. If you click on that one, you can go to part one of my Super Mario 3D World Let's Play. Or if you click on that one, you can watch me open some Pokemon cards. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.